No, why is it out of focus? Oh, okay. Good, good. So I have decided I'm going to record this. I'm not going live because it's too oh, um, controversial, confronting, painful, embarrassing. And yet I know I want to talk about it because it's real, it's life, it's what's happening now. I was at the doctor, at the urologist. <sighs> okay, that's why I didn't want to go live because I didn't know it would end up like this, but I wanted to record what I'm going through because in the end, ultimately, I believe I can reverse everything. I believe, <laughs> she said, it's not cancer because if it was, it would have killed you already. But you've probably had a dead kidney for 30 years. Your kidney is not working. It's what what they call a, a stum, dumb, dormant, and yeah. Well, the um the CT showed that the right kidney was very slow; that it hadn't absorbed any of the contrast substance within one hour. But by the next morning, it was completely full of the contrast metal, whereas the other one had completely already expelled it all and she tells me she suspects now she still wants me to do certain tests so i need to make the appointments with the specialist i have to go to this place called for nuclear medicine this place called oh she didn't even write it down ma she told she gave me the phone number she gave me the address something like isotropics i think it's called so i need to to have these tests to confirm her suspicion. And it doesn't matter, it's completely normal. Lots of people have only got one kidney and it's like having two rubbish bins in front of your house and the one's always empty and you're always filling the other one. So it doesn't matter whether you've got two bins or one because you always fill the one up and the other one is there just in case you need it. So the kidney that doesn't work doesn't matter because the other kidney has taken over all of the functions. I'm, I'm doing fine. but. Okay, the last two weeks I've been feeling off. And part of it, uh, you know, I was nearly going to say depressed. It's because I've had this, you know, I've, I mean, right now, even when I've been coughing a few times, I've been coughing up phlegm. So my breathing isn't completely okay. And, yeah, when it's when I breathe that I feel the pain in the in the lower back. And it's a pain, similar pain to what I had two weeks ago. The emergency was the severe pain on the bottom on the right, that I couldn't even breathe right through into the lung without a severe pain on the right-hand side. And then when Andy gave me the IV and the painkiller, and then the next day I, was taking, I took quite a few painkillers and it got a bit better. So it's not completely better, but it's not as bad. And... So for me, the issue is, do I accept this um, verdict? You know, it's not even a death sentence. She told me everything's fine. I can complete living as normal. And lots of people only have one kidney. And it's okay. But it, it still did. It threw me into a certain state of shock. And then I went shopping and I bought myself chocolates and and snacks and and popcorn and 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 macadamia nuts because they're my comfort food uh um um passion fruit but it's not ripe yet the avocados even though they were advertised as ripe enough to eat were not ripe so i didn't buy them i bought some um kidney bladder tea 
even though, you know, it's not the bladder, it's the kidney. And she says, I asked her whether, you know, teas and herbal teas and other things might help. And I, I know she's a doctor. She's not in that area. She's not into holistic medicine. She's not into natural therapies. She did say drinking is good, but she didn't say anything about, especially about teas. And yet I know I could do much, much more in terms of drinking teas, hot drinks, drinking more, doing exercise, walking every day, using my Healy for frequency treatment, raising my energy, having a positive attitude, and perhaps even checking with Life Plus some of the supplements that might be more helpful for the kidney. She said it's good to know that the one kidney is not working so you don't overdose on, for example, painkillers, that the certain medications in large volumes can be a bit much of a strain for the kidney. So, yeah, I have tended not to want to take pills apart from my vitamins. And I believe my vitamins get completely digested. So, yeah, I just had to share this now because it was, um, yeah, it's the 27th of February, 2023. I'm 68 years old. And yes, I, I think about what else it could mean for me, for my family. I think of my kids who haven't got any children and all of my friends who died before they became grandparents. Marisi, Valka. Elizabeth Riedel was a grandmother when she went to Spirit World. Elvira not. And, you know, I can't blame or accuse or push anybody else to have children. We started very late and when our children start as late as we did, well, my grandmother did, my mother did see her grandchildren, even her great grandchildren. I'm very grateful for that. And I don't know whether I'm going to see my grandchildren. And in that sense, I hope for my children that they realize that it's up to them whether their children have grandparents or not, depending on when they decide to have their children. So, you know what, my my earnest desire right now is the three generation household. Two week it was the two weeks ago when um, when Andy came at midnight with Francesca to help me. That I had a very very clear desire that I don't want to just live the two of us or alone. It's funny because growing up having to share a room with my older and younger brother. It was always my desire to have a room of my own. So for a couple of years, I had my own room. My mum reckons because they painted it purple, that's why I went crazy and joined the Moonies. And, um, you know, she sees that as part of the problem in, in my growing up. It's funny how parents also have their, <laughs> their attitudes about their kids. Now, um, I appreciate, I do need my my time and my space. And I, I like it that Joseph goes out to work, that I have space to do what I want. But I don't want to be completely alone. I don't want to live in each other's pockets. I don't want to be at each other's backs but I want to be close by and the three gener the dream of the three generation household for me is each family has their own private space where they can retreat and for me it's important that I even personally have my own private space it's not just a space for me and Joseph I need a space for me and often feel that Joseph doesn't understand that. Sometimes he's, he's got his loud music or other things going. And I do the same on purpose, trying to reflect it back to him to show him. And sometimes I think he does it just because I've done it. 
and I'm usually doing it because I'm trying to to show him how inappropriate it is. And yeah, sometimes I say it, but not every time. And that's yeah, that's where my kids would tell me you need to tell us more what you're thinking. And yeah, I'm trying to do it with the with the signs and I'm I'm often not actually saying it. I need my space. I need my freedom to like like now I'm going live and if he was in the other room I wouldn't feel like I can even talk freely. And even though it's not even going anywhere right now, I'm not posting it anywhere. I'm recording it. I don't know where I'll safely keep it for the transmission that I want to share. However, I hope that when I go that all my stuff won't be just deleted from the face of the earth because of the simply because of the huge volume of stuff that I've collected. So I've always been convinced that I'm going to live a long life. My I was thinking this morning, I, I, I was very observant of myself and what I'm going through and feeling, yeah, recognizing this certain um, self-pity, but appreciating that it's not necessarily even coming only from within me, but also from my ancestors. And I thought of my mother and my grandparents and I started to feel the gratitude and the optimism, okay? My mother lived to be 93. My mother's mother, my grandmother lived to be over 90. My father's mother, my grandmother lived to be over 90. I always expected to live to be over 90. I expect to live to be 96 or so. So that means I've got an, at least another, not quite 30 years, but over 25 years. So I want to live with with vitality, with health, with I want to be dynamic. I don't want to be lying around moping, complaining. I want to be inspiring. And yes, I'd love to have grandchildren running in and saying, hey, grandma, grandma, and interrupting me in whatever I'm doing. That's okay. And then to have my free time, my, my private time, and then to be able to share some of the stuff that I've got that's worth sharing and to continue working on my stuff and then to educate my little mentees, whoever they are. So I've got that off my chest now. That was important for me to say that because it was quite a shock when, when the doctor just blurt it out, oh, your kidney's not working. The other one's working. It's doing the job of that one. That's fine. But that one's not doing anything. It's uh, We don't have to do anything because it's not cancerous or anything. Because if it was, it would have already killed you. That's what she said. That's what she said. If it was cancerous, it would have already killed you. Because it looks like you've had this for over 30 years. Okay, the um, computer tomography said that it was... Uh, in German, a Stauung, so um, like a swollen or um, congested kidney. But to say that it was dead, you know, that it's numb, that it's asleep, that it's dormant, that it's not doing anything, a failed kidney. Oh, that's, that's pretty tough and easy to get very, very negative. So that's why... It's important for me to get it all out. I'm getting it all out. And determined I'm not going to get consumed by this negativity. I'm going to, if that's what it takes to get me to be more mobile, to be more active, to be proactive, to take responsibility, then, wow, what did I write in my blog about thinking into results? If that health crisis was the only thing that worked to get me into the situation that I want to be in, to be able to cut off from all the stuff that I don't want to be doing, to focus on what I do want to be doing, wow, it's 
it's powerful to think, you know, the, the words I used was thinking into results that I brought this upon myself. Well, how did I bring about kidney failure 30 years ago? What happened 30 years ago that, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the other thing, okay, the next thing I want to do is look up the significance of the organs of the kidneys and what what do they mean in, in the other medicines, in the natural medicines and uh, in Chinese and Eastern medicine. What's the sim what is it a symbol of that my kidney is blocked? Yeah, that's uh, so the issue is still clear to me I need to declutter I need to let things flow right so the reason I ca I got up off the couch the I was in the armchair with the warm uh, electric blanket watching Hawaii 5 of course because I always want to watch the programs about the sun and the beach and the tropics and um I got up now because even though I've got no intention of going to the CND meeting, I ha have not completely discounted the option of hosting the Zoom meeting, doing what I can. And as a mentor for people who want to get a job at the UN, I still feel I need to keep my fingers in that area and I recognize that I was not on the on the name list and apparently Renata wrote this morning that today was the last day to register and when I did try to register they asked for the official name list from the NGO with the names of the representatives and I know my name was not on that list so that's why I stopped there. I didn't do it. Now she said she sent it. And if today is really the deadline, then I guess I feel obliged to register myself. Not even committing myself to doing it yet. Renata asked me, she called me this morning or yesterday. And I told her that was yesterday before I went to the doctor. And I told her that I had the doctor's appointment today and that I would not commit to providing the Zoom link on my account until shortly before the deadline, which she said would be next Tuesday. So I said, well, you know, Monday soon enough. I go to the doctor tomorrow and I'll let you know after that whether, whether I can do it or not because I'm not going to jump in and say yes if I mean no. And if I'm still dealing with my health and wow, this was a real blow. This was something that could put me in this state of no, 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 no. I can't do anything ever again. But honestly, I felt like that two weeks ago after the meeting in Siebenstein, after the Women's Federation decided they're going to support Vigdis and not me. That was it for me. That was that internally, that was already my cut. So the fact that they had this meeting this morning for three hours, going over every page of the web page with Vigdis, and then she gets all this very positive feedback and praise. Good for her because now they're paying her to do it. But I never felt like I got any of that support. And I still feel like I'm going through this process of grieving because that meeting, that decision, even though I have to I have to say those women in the Women's Federation European and Middle East executive had no idea of what they were saying no to. They just knew, oh, we can't afford 5,000 euros a month. It's true. Yet, I was following my mentor. I made the offer. And 
my understanding was their responsibility was to counter it, to give me a response. And when the offer only came for Vigdis for the homepage, yes, I took it personally. It, was, it, it wasn't correct of me. It was actually a total misunderstanding. Mitty had no idea what I was doing. Vigdis doesn't realise how much I was doing on Facebook. You know, this last her story, I didn't see anything on Facebook or anywhere else. I don't know where they posted or shared it and I was holding myself back because I I feel I have to I have to hold myself back and not do all that stuff that I was doing before automatically simply because I asked for 5,000 euros a month no not just that but because I felt zero appreciation acknowledgement affirmation understanding recognition and if I just keep, I mean, it's the same with Toastmasters. I was doing Easy Speak and, and the YouTube channel. And uh, I do a lot of stuff. And I do it because I love doing it. I do it passionately. And yet I don't make a big fuss telling people about what I'm doing. And so people don't know what I'm doing. Okay, it's already 21 minutes. It's long enough of me rattling on. I think I've said what was on my mind, on my heart. And I, I'm just reiterating that to a certain extent, I feel like I have caused a trauma in myself because I took the situation personally the fact that WFWP doesn't know what I'm doing, doesn't appreciate it, doesn't give me any credit for it, that I feel uh, like, a, like a, a hurt child, okay, I'm not going to do anything else and let them see how they get along without me. Yeah, that's how I feel. And it's the 27th of February. And actually, if I still followed my mentor, I would be writing a letter to my prospective mentee so that we can clarify our begin at the beginning of the 1st of March. And I recognise still this certain resistance in myself and what I was talking about before the um my ancestors in the spirit world i recognize i don't believe it i'm in the middle of a zoom meeting yet yeah, i was thinking of winding down but i still had a lot of things going up here i was on 21 minutes and on the camera on the computer i don't know how to do a virtual background i don't even know whether it is possible but um internet just crashed so i've got no internet now so i've just gone online um not online on camera anyhow because what <laughs> because the topic i was getting into is always a topic that that really gets me going it's the digital divide is it the digital divide or just the virtual reality or the electronic world, the world of energy, vibrations, spirits, love, ancestors, and our physical world? And I was aware that some of the feelings, the self-pity, the negativity, were not necessarily my own feelings. Even the the um, the desire, the need to for all the sweets, the chocolates, the comfort food. I permitted myself to buy all that stuff. I didn't hold back. I didn't allow my my conscience or my mind to judge 
and say, oh no, you, you can't do that, you're not allowed to do that, or that's fattening. I permitted myself to buy the dark chocolates with the with the fruit center, the macadamia nuts roasted and salted. And and thought about all of my ancestors in the spirit world, recognizing that there are some there that were very obsessed and attached to their physical comforts, to eating especially, eating, drinking, smelling, smoking, whatever. And recognizing my role on this earth with a physical body, with five physical senses, to channel the energies, to help them also to raise their frequency, not to get pulled down. So pulling down would be by focusing on the physical energies, on the physical things and, and being consumed by, by greed, by self-centeredness, uh, eating a ton of chocolates until I was sick. I actually bought that stuff and determined to really appreciate. So while I was l sitting in the armchair, in front of the television with my warm blanket, I was appreciating these macadamia nuts and dark chocolate. And I've been thinking about those ancestors who've gone into the spirit world. Now, I don't even know. I, I believe there are a certain number of them, maybe from 100 or 200 years ago. I remember in 1982 when I was in New York and Beatrice, no, was it Beatrice or somebody else? Who was it that I met who did the, um, with the pendulum and told me that there was some ancestor from Prussia who was so obsessed with the fear of not having enough to eat that they overate and that I should make a condition of preparing food for others and offering to help this this person, this spirit to overcome those feelings and to come to a new level. So I'm I'm pretty aware that there are these influences in, in my lineage, in my background. And that a lot of the things that I'm feeling are not even necessarily my own personally. So even though I'm saying I'm taking this personally and I know I shouldn't, it's it's not really even that I'm taking it personally. I'm, I'm just observing. I'm so aware of what I'm feeling and recognizing that a lot of it is actually coming from ancestors in the past. So that was the other thing I wanted to say. And internet is not back. I guess I'll have to try and turn the the uh, the router off and on again and I believe this happens every day where the internet just cuts out but isn't it weird that it cut out just then when I was at that point discussing those spiritual issues I feel like it's significant but I'm also indignant that our provider keeps offering us a more expensive package suggesting, oh, it'll be better if you pay more. Whereas when I have a service that I'm paying for that is unstable, that doesn't really work and isn't reliable, it doesn't give me any confidence to believe that if I paid more that it will be better. It really doesn't. Even though yeah, the 5G, the next level, should actually be a package that gives me faster internet connection and maybe should work a lot better. I don't know. I don't know. That's it. All right. So I'll go and turn the router off and on and get myself something to drink and continue figuring my path. And part of that is 
okay, registering for the CND, deciding where I really want to go, what do I really want to do, and trying to declutter. But most of my decluttering is still a lot of digital declutter, trying to put stuff together. And yeah, for example, my, my database, my journal database has crashed. I was trying to get a list of all the meetings that I attended in 2022. And there were 55 meetings in January alone. I think it was over 110 in January, February together. And then when I was in March, the database crashed. Uh, I did some research and access is not supposed to crash. It's supposed to be able to manage millions and billions of pieces of data. So I don't know why that happened. <laughs> Back to the digital issue, right? So. Yeah, okay. So wherever this turns up, <laughs> I'm fine. Yes, I'm. I've had a blow today, and it might be just exactly what I needed to get me off my butt to start really moving and taking responsibility for my personal situation, recognizing that I've still got 25 years that I want to live a fruitful, productive life. And sitting here the whole day is not going to be the way to do it. There has to be much, much more movement and a lot more healthy stuff in there. Okay, that's, that's the message.